wanted our fi fi 56. 56! Our 56! Yay! Yay! That means we are over halfway through a continuous storyline. So if you are joining us at our 56, there are 55 hours that have already happened of adventure, and we are now going to be running through the 56. We'll be running 100 hours of adventure throughout the entirety of the Edinburgh Fringe, four hours a day, seven days a week. So, that also means that if anyone in the audience is confused about anything that's going on in the story, please feel free to jump in and say, what was going on? I'm confused. I like a panto audience. So, uh, please feel free to shout out at any point and ask what is happening. Uh, that also means we have a relaxed attitude to sound and movement in the audience for the benefit of anyone who would have difficulty being still or silent for an hour. Uh, there will be some music in the background, and we're not strictly a completely relaxed performance, as we also have sound effects from Wilhelm at the computer. Ah! There we go, lovely. So we also have some sound effects throughout today. Uh, the lighting will, however, stay exactly the same to make sure that you can see what's going on. And if you need to leave at any point, please head out through either of the two doors to your your left, yes, your left, uh, where you entered. There will be sweet staff members out there in red and black t-shirts with the sweet logo. Do ask them for assistance. If you need assistance in the room, our stage manager Nemo is right there. And they are available for any of your needs. Please give them a wave, catch their eye, head over to them if you need assistance. Uh, we are playing Dungeons and Dragons for the next hour. What does that mean? For those who are uninitiated, the four players to my left and right are playing characters in a shared universe. I play the shared universe that they are in, so I will be dealing with everyone they encounter, everything that happens to them, and the story at large, and then collaboratively the five of us will tell this story together. To make sure that I don't abuse the awesome power at my fingertips, and to give them all something fun to do, and create an element of randomness in this story, we use dice. This is a 20-sided dice. Uh, one is terrible, 20 is good. They will roll them throughout. Please feel free to cheer or boo, depending on the outcome of said dice roll. We encourage that kind of interaction. Before I describe the story to date, I think it's best if we go around the table and introduce everyone that we have with us today. Please give me your name, uh, your character's name, what pronouns you and they use, and also a bit about what your character looks like so we get a nice vision of who they are. Of course. Thanks, Reese. Um, my name is Reese. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and that is shared with my character. Uh, I play a tabaxi, which is a cat person. Um, imagine like a humanoid ocelot. Um, I'm a druid, so my magic comes from nature itself and my connection to it. And cats uh, mostly. And Lots of cats. cat themes to your magic, which is cool. I like that. Um, looking forward to describing lightning bolt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and my character's name is Professor Digby Drewsell. So. Um, get ready for that. Sorry, my fault. Go ahead. Well, this wasn't a hairball. Hi. Very <laughs> <laughs> good. Hi, I'm Naomi. Um, uh, I use she her pronouns, and uh, my character is Roberta Risk, war journalist extraordinaire, former academic, now documenting everything that's going on. Uh, not particularly happy about this or has found out the most information and is very happy about it. She also uses she, her pronouns. She is an elf and she's quite tall and lean and always has a pen tucked behind her ear, which is going to be important in a minute. <laughs> uh, I'm G. Um, I am playing Harvey. Uh, both of us are he, him pronouns. Um, Harvey is an Aracocra, which is a, a bird person, about five feet, five feet tall. Um, uh, Sort of blue and yellow plumage, uh, very parrot looking, uh, and <coughs> has a, a bear paw print sigil sort of thing burned into the feathers on his chest after uh, he had the spirit of a barbarian, a dwarven, dwarven barbarian, um, entered him. Let's, let, let's make that a bit less sexual. Um, uh, <laughs> a spirit of Dwarden Barbarian saved your life about yes, 20 yes. hours ago and um, brought you back from the brink of death. Yes. Yep. My name's Mark. Uh, my character is also a him. Um, he is John Hisborn, a dragonborn druid, a green one. Picture a dragon standing on his hind legs, but as a human. Then you'll know what he looks like. He loves animals. Peter with claws. He has no memory prior to the rebellion. Lovely. Thank you very much. Mark. 
So let's have the uh, music back in. Threatening, ominous. That's what we've had all day, I think. And let me tell you what's happened to date. We are beneath Castle Goldcrest. Castle Goldcrest is in Goldcrest the city, which is the capital of a country called Derelant. In the crypt-like tomb beneath this castle, an elf ranger, Elassi, has placed a significant amount of explosive magical ore in a room in this tomb that she wishes to blow up and presumably use it to either destroy or damage most of Goldcrest, which has been invaded and taken over by an evil cult that worship an elder god that five years before this point ravaged through the lands and destroyed most of it. The cult was defeated by the rebellion, which a lot of these our party members are members of. Sorry, bad English. Um, but together they have managed to have an ongoing tussle with the cult, and Goldcrest is currently in cult hands. A gigantic army of cultists and their eldritch warrior monsters are currently making their way towards Holmwood, which is where all these characters are from, a small town in the mountains. But at the moment they are dealing with this problem. Elassi has been convinced to stay her terrible action and to hold back and not destroy this ore underneath the Goldcrest and destroy everything and all the cultists within the castle and Goldcrest proper and all the people within this tomb space, obviously, including all the characters. However, some of the cultists have become aware of what's happening beneath this castle and are knocking at the proverbial gate. So, the three of you, plus your elf wizard companion Wisatris, who is also Elassi's mother, have convinced her to stand down. Roberta, when the elves snuck away in the night with the ore to take it to Goldcrest to t carry out this nefarious plot, you found out what they were doing, tried to follow, and were kidnapped by them, and you have been held in this tomb until this very point where right. you are in the corner, bound and gagged, mm -hmm. watching this whole situation unfurl in front of you. Is there anything you'd like to do to start us off? Because I, I put you in the worst situation yeah. possible right now. Uh, so I have a dagger. Sure. And I'm wondering if... It will have been taken off you because the elves are not stupid. So they've taken my dagger on my rapier. Yeah. Are my dagger on my rapier in the room anywhere? Yeah, they're on one of the elves. The... Oh, for God's sake. Okay. <laughs> That's real rude. Okay. Um... No, no. We'll, we'll, tie and, we'll tie and gag this person but leave their weapons on them is how elves think. Or like leaned against the wall instead of carry someone no. them. Um... It's a nice rapier. One of them's using it. Now... I have, how, like, what are my hands like at the minute? Like, Your hands are bound behind you, mm -hmm. and specifically because you are a spellcaster of some note, your thumbs have been bound together, so you can't make any magical sigils. Sure. Either. Could I... Again, elves are not morons. Okay. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> do you want to just sit there and watch, or do you want to... No, I, I'm, gonna, I'm just trying to think of what I can do, because yep. I'm, I'm, I'm rattling through options and you're taking them away from me. Uh, right, yes. Say um, something. Get someone's attention. I would like to try and wriggle myself out, wriggle at least my thumbs out of how they've been bound. Absolutely. Roll yeah. an ath. No, I, I think it's all acrobatics. I'll allow you to choose. Oh, well, I guess, I guess I'll choose acrobatics, I mean. Cool. <laughs> Uh, that's Nat one. Oh, uh, as, buddy. You, as you rotate your thumbs behind you, oh, please don't break one. You're tr you rolled a Nat one. Yeah. As you rotate your <laughs> thumbs behind you, trying oh. to twist them out with a horrible. I'm gonna do it on this thumb. There we go. With a horrible twist, you dislocate your thumb. Yeah. Which I'd like to scream really loudly and hopefully draw the attention of other people. As you <laughs> hear a scream in the corner, you all at combat readiness. As the elves have now told you that cultists are approaching, see Roberta in the corner. Screaming into a gag. <laughs> Clearly done something awful to her thumb. Um, I will scuttle over and mm -hmm. using my feline claws just start to cut her out. The elf next to you has clearly been placed in charge of looking after <laughs> Roberta. Watches you do this, realises you're all allies now and all agreeing to get, take the aura away and sort of nods sheepishly and steps aside. Give her her weapons back. Roll persuasion check. He likes the rapier. If you take gag off my mouth I'm better at it <laughs> ah. well you said you were doing it ha! one <laughs> dice roll two natural ones I am looking forward to this hour um, it gives you looking no it's mine now it just turns and walks away <laughs> oh is it okay <laughs> I just I'm sorry I tried <laughs> take can you I'm no use to you without my rapier at the very least. You cast spells, don't you? The elf just wanders off. No damaging spells! 
To be fair, there's a huge amount of ore in the corner. I think that's good. Elasi shouts over and goes, Give her her weapons back! <laughs> Sulking off, turns to him, pulls the rapier out and gives it to you. And while I do that, I'm just going to go, to, I'm just going to look at my thumb and go, Okay, we need to cast spells again, so I'm doing this. So I'm going to cast Healing Word on my thumb. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you took no damage. But I know, but... You will now have no like... disadvantage on dexterity checks because the thumb is broken. That's totally fine. You are sated. All four of you and the and Wisatris, your elven um, wizard companion, Ilassi and all of her rangers, are currently in a position where you realise that there are cultists coming to the door of this tomb and will probably try and break in. There are some guards with bows knocked and drawn standing by the door, listening in, waiting for them to approach. There is too much ore here for you all to carry out in one go. Even with every single person here carrying as much as they could carry, sensibly, you will not manage to get all of it out in one go. Um. You're also wary of using magic because the ore is activated by magic, which means a short, sharp tap makes it explode. And this much ore would probably level the entire city. Would that include shape-changing? Interesting. Shape-changing would not affect the ore in that way, no. pac Sorry? I can go pack mule. Will a pack mule fit down a five foot by five foot wide corridor? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll allow. That's totally fine. <laughs> it's um, a medium it's a creature. Beast of burden, so it can carry crap loads. It can, that's true. So John, you, you transform into a into a pack mule and the elves realizing what's going on with the lassie guiding them start placing ore into Do you have any satchels on your back? You wouldn't necessarily. So we would be start strapping the Yeah, they start strapping boxes. and tying it onto you, so you're going to be a walking grenade if you're not careful. Okay, that's a good start. What's everyone else doing? Um, I will be assisting um, getting, like, taking my own pouches and just strapping them on, um, but also keeping a very tentative eye on the door. As you do, the door <laughs> shudders slightly as if someone tried to open it, and the elves hold it shut, look back and go, Okay... There are now people at the door trying to open it. What would you all like to do? I want to draw my rapier and get as far away from the ore as possible. <laughs> the ore is currently being strapped to a mule in front of the only door out of this room that is, doesn't have cultists behind it. Yeah, that, that's fine. You want to go and hug a wall? Like... Yeah, I'll hug a wall near the door that the cultists are coming out of. Okay. I, want, I want to see if there's anything else in the room movable that is not ore that can be put to, used to barricade the door. Uh, broken pews and altar could be shifted. Yeah, yeah. So I, I start trying to haul stuff and cool. And Make an athletics check. I try and uh, get a couple of catch a couple of eyes of elves to help. They come and help you. Uh, I ten. Roll it again because they come and help you. Uh, Fifteen. Between you, so you and some of the elves are now moving desperately these very old, rotting um, pieces of wood against the door. It won't hold much. There is a gigantic stone altar that could possibly be shifted over towards the door, but it is very big and will take a huge amount of strength to move. At which point the door boom, gets knocked in very heavily, presumably by something large and very strong. Um, before I move off to the wall, sorry, because yes. I forgot to do this, can it's I right. touch um, Harvey on the shoulder and go, you can do this and cast heroism? Yes, of course you can. Um, what are the effects so, of heroism? So what that means for you is you get um, you get three temporary hit points, four temporary hit points, no, three. Christmas three. Uh, you get three temporary hit points, you get an additional three at the start of each of your turns, mm-hmm. and you're immune to being frightened. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that is a concentration, so just... And how do you manifest your spells? Uh, I, well, all my energy is like sort of like a dull green, not like a yep. bright glowy green, like more like khaki but not khaki colour, like a greyish mm-hmm. green. Okay. Um, and it just like, it's normally with words, so as I say the words, like the magic comes down from my mouth through my arm and then into his shoulder. Lovely, excellent. So you are now feeling very heroic. Great. Yep. Uh, would you like to try and move the stone altar with the help of the elves who are currently amassing around it, realizing that's the only way they're going to deal with it? Two yes. of the elves are currently holding the door desperately, but they're not going to be able to hold it for much longer. Yeah, yeah. Try and move the. Cool. Make an athletics check with advantage because they're helping you. Does it break uh, a twenty? Nineteen. Nah. You and the elves are desperately. <laughs> dragging this gigantic altar across the floor towards the door but you're not going to reach it in time as the door is kicked open and in the doorway crawling its way through is one of the manglers one of these rather large creatures you've seen Uh, it has got black tufts of fur all over it very long spindly arms too many arms too many jaws too many teeth and it is screeching as it steps its way into the room and we need to enter initiative I'm afraid the time to do it. Yeah, That's it the time to do it. Oh, yes. <laughs> Who rolled above a 25? 
22. Okay, who rolled above a 20? Me. 21. 21, 22. Splendid. Digby and Roberta, you will be going first. Sick. 19. 19. 16. Excellent. Sorry, 17. Yeah, very good initiative roll, so that's fantastic. So all of you will be going before anyone else. That's oh, perfect. sorry, G, the temporary hit points are plus four, my charisma is plus four. Right, you get <laughs> yeah. four temporary hit points and you add four to each At the start of each turn. Uh, right. Four at the start of each turn. Yeah. Yes, you do. Is that up to my maximum or is it... No, one? it just keeps going. Okay. Until I drop my concentration. Amazing. <laughs> Digby, you're going first. What would you like to do? I... Seeing the creature bust through the door, is it followed by any cultists or is it just the creature? There are cultists behind it, but it's pretty big. So at this point, the cultists all have half cover. Well, that don't matter. Um, oh! I take out a ball of yarn. Mm-hmm. I throw it towards the door. Mm-hmm. It explodes into a bunch of kittens that start playing with astral balls of yarn. <laughs> Can every creature within a, like, I think it's a 20 foot cube? make a dexterity saving throw as I cast what I'm going to call feline fire <laughs> um, what is it actually very fire <laughs> <laughs> yes so a dexterity saving throw yep that is a 16 oh, they pass that is a 10 that's a fail the mangler itself seems to not be affected by this, but the uh, cultists swarming around behind it are. What is? How do the cultists affect it? Uh, so the kittens that are floating through the sky mm-hmm. um, and are playing with the yarn, the ones mm-hmm. that are affected by it, you know when like you go to feed a cat like a kitten, they start climbing up the back of your trouser? Yeah. It's like that, but all over their body. It's <laughs> just these glowing little kittens. Glowing kittens all over their bodies. Adorable. Thank you. Uh, um, any attacks towards them have advantage. Splendid. They are currently considered to be in cover, but that effect means that they attacks are made against them normally. Fantastic. Roberta, what would you like to do? You are currently hugging the wall next to this. You are about 10 feet away from the mangler blasting, blasting? bursting its way through the door. Yep, yeah, and I see my friend Digby do that. Yes, so you do. Who I get to call Digby because I know him. Yeah, you uh, do. <laughs> and, everyone um, else, he's the professor. Yeah. Um, Wears a tweed jacket with elbow pads and all. But we, we studied together. We did our undergrad together. So. <laughs> so. No, just say me and Reese are mates. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, we decided a whole backstory before we got on stage. Because you um, and Reese are right. mates, exactly. It's fine. <laughs> so, um, we're going to. I am. Yes. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to. Yeah, just fight. You know, being a bad. I'm gonna get into melee with the mangler and I'm gonna slash at it with. You step alongside it and stab in at its side, make yeah. an attack roll. Does fairy, fairy fire doesn't affect anything? It does not, I'm afraid. It's not under the effects of fairy fire. Oh, yeah, bad. Um, I'm gonna roll real bad. Uh, that's an 11. Uh, your rapier does that wonderful thing as it bends as you try and push through its armoured skin, its tough hide, and you just quickly stop the attack, otherwise, you'd probably snap your rapier in half. Cool. Um, yep, yeah, that's. Fair. You have a bonus action, would you like to use it? Yes, I would. I would like to shout to Digby. Digby, you're better than this. I know you can do more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you a bardic inspiration. Sweet. Oh, and it's much, the pretty one. Yeah, and much like flares, um, it can be added to damage rolls as well as um, awesome. other things. Roberta, as you see the magic coursing around the language and not affecting it, can you make a perception check for me, please? Absolutely. You're going to die, Right, uh, well, that's a ten. Big fat ten. Ten? Yeah. Well, you don't notice anything. Just another fight. Sick. John! As the Karen Pack Mule. Yes? I'm going to turn around and walk away from that horrible thing in front of me and go towards yep. the back of the room. You have not had a huge amount of ore strapped to you. There is still a good seven-eighths of it left in a pile in the corner of the room. But you have quite a lot of ore, enough to certainly damage you severely, strapped to your back in pack mule form as you canter towards the uh, way through the tombs, out through the jail, out through the city. Yeah, there's a very long, complicated map thing that they go through. But yes, um, you head towards the exit. Um... You can easily do that on your turn. There is nothing threatening you at this point, so you can easily make your way there. Would you like to take any further actions? Um, at the moment, I can't drill in this form, but I'm sure the rest of the group will notice the mule is running. Make a perception check for me. Oh, that's a nice one. Uh, 21. As you move away from the ore in the corner and run towards, well, canter towards the edge of the room and the exit, 
you hear a distinct, quiet, low-level fizzing from the ore in the corner. Spells being cast around it does set this ore off. At this point, a short, sharp tap would mean death for all of you. I will roll dice for it, I will make sure, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are currently fighting next to an active atomic bomb. I can't speak when I'm in... No, you can't. No, you can't. No, you cannot. So I'm probably just going to neigh and kind of point that way. <laughs> With what, a hoof? <laughs> well, just... Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> More a case of neigh. I see. Harvey. Head point. Harvey. Um, <clears throat> I think I would try and be very careful not to be anywhere near any ore as much as possible sure. when I cast Banishment on the Mangler. Okay. I roll for that, don't I? It's a charisma uh, save. Thank you. That is a nine. It's banished! <laughs> How does your banishment work? Um, so I uh, I kind of clench my fists mm -hmm. while staring at my, my target. Mm -hmm. uh, and my my eyes glow and sort of lines of, like, like veins of glowing green go down mm. my arms. Yes. I open my, my hands. Uh, and basically the, the Mangler is sucked through portals in my hands. Oh, very Doctor Strange, I like it. Zoop. It is, it, it sort of, it sort of becomes smaller and spins, a bit like a Final Fantasy game, and <laughs> disappears into your hands. It's like spaghettification, this is like black hole. Lovely, like, excellent, yeah. yeah. Where it will stay for a minute if you can maintain concentration. Yes. Excellent. Uh, as you do this, you reveal behind it a, good, a sea of cultists, about ten of them. Um, and also you hear the roars behind you in the corridor of more of said manglers. They are clearly sending quite a few things down to deal with this situation. But you have removed one of them. Excellent. At which point the elves all fire off arrows at the cultists. Quite a few skitter off the door and to the side, but one or two cultists are impacted by arrows. Just checking generally. Yeah. And uh, quite a few of them fall, especially because the attack all had advantage because of these glowing cats clawing up their backs. Uh, with Sartris and Elassi, she Sartris places an arm across her daughter's uh, chest and steps back and holds her back. Um, she looks at her, they look at each other. And she takes no action. Elassi knocks an arrow to her bow. She turns to you all and just shouts, run. Okay. Um, I just want to. I just want to clarify something. Of course. Um, I just looked over banishment. Yep. Is the mangler from this plane of existence? Yes. Oh, okay. It is a mutated humanoid, I'm afraid. Ah, fair enough. Never it's an mind. abomination. That's a very nerdy rules question, but it doesn't matter. If it wasn't, if he maintained concentration mm. for a minute, it would never come back. An eldritch horror would be in that position, but this, I'm afraid, is a horribly mutated by the ore as well. Interesting. Fair. Okay, uh, humanoid. Cool. Uh, um. There are a bunch of cultists. Elassi has shouted, run. The cultists haven't taken their action, I'm sorry. The cultists start firing spells into the room. Oh, no. Thanks, guys. Avoiding the, um, yeah. Avoiding the ore because they know exactly what it does. Harvey, you take seven points of fire damage as a firebolt scorches across your chest. Make a concentration check, please. Ten or higher. You're fine. You managed to maintain concentration on your banishment spell. Uh, John's mule is quite a long way away. You cast Fairy Fire on them. Mm -hmm. uh, you take eight points of fire damage as fire scorches across your cat-like hide as well as the cultists just leap into the room and starting to fire spells across. Roberta, they have not noticed you by the doorway. They are simply going into the room, trying to clear and secure the room because they don't want you to set up the orb. Okay. Yup. Digby, it is your turn. What would you like to do? Cultists are, are now flying in into the room. There are plenty in a line, yes. Yeah. Lightning bolt! Excellent. <laughs> Dexterity saving crash? Yes, please. No! No? Failed. Oh. Oh boy. Oh. E6 damage, please. I'm gonna eight. throw a like D8 well, yeah. in there as well, why not? <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. That's some good body Just inspiration. Right he threw there. the D8 in because he was given inspiration eight. dice for it, not because he just decided to throw in a D8 in <laughs> <and then laughs> Be very clear on that. <laughs> yeah, with the with the type of bard we're using. Yeah, 22, 23, 24. 
26 plus 8 it is doesn't matter. 34. Your lightning damage. bolt tears through a line of cultists, obliterating five of them in an instant. Yep. They are just shattered through. However, as that starts to clear the crowd a little bit, you see behind another mangler is stepping its way into the doorway. You are clearing the way and you are certainly damaging these creatures, but you get the sense there may be quite a lot of them. What would you like to do? Your allies I, said, well, I, the electrical kittens leave my hands. I look at the manga. I'm like, I'm going to take your advice. And I turn and make my way towards the exit. Cool. Are you using your feline agility? Uh, not yet. Okay. You run towards the exit. You are keeping pace with the pack mule with some ore on its back. You are running back down towards this tomb. You have not left the room yet. It's a rather large room. Roberta, you are standing by the doorway. Cultists are now kind of blocking your path towards the exit, unless you manage to do something clever. Okay, yeah, I do want to do something clever. Oh. Um, I'm going to turn to Harley and say, can you fly out of here fast? The, the tunnel's not wide enough. Okay, um, and you look like you're running pretty quick. So I'm going to grab onto Harvey and I'm going to dimension door back to the prison. To get to Harvey, you will have to run through some of these cultists because Harvey is standing in front of them. Let's risk it. Why okay, not? make an acrobatics check as you run. Am I able to do anything to help? Like, even turn and reach out? Yeah, why not? Do it with advantage. Okay. Yeah, that's only fair. Uh, that is. Uh, that first one was 16. Mm hmm. And that second one was six, so I'll take the 16 if that's Absolutely. okay. <laughs> that's fine. You push past cultists, grasping hands. You run away as the mangler starts stamping its way into the room, screeching uncontrollably. And as you run forward, you grab Harvey's hand in that classic overhand friendship grab. Yep. And together, you fall through a dimension door you create behind him and are now back in the cell. So I draw, yeah, I draw my dimension door out with a pen. So I take the pen from behind, oh, draw it out, Very and then good. we dive through. Yeah. And as you and as you dive through this dimension door, you are now back in the cell where the door to these tombs lead. There's a long tomb corridor that leads to the thing. So you are a good 500 feet away from where you were. Sick. But uh, you are there, and there are a bunch of elves just standing there, looking a bit confused. You want to say anything? If we're talking to free action. Um, the cultists are heading down to the or Alassie told us all to run. They nod and just go. <laughs> they start running as well. If there's a chance they can escape, they will try. Lovely. John, you're in pack mule form. Are you still running down the corridor? I'm going to still... Use your full action. Yep. Great. Ahead of you, the, as pack, possible. the pack mule is running as fast as it can, and you can see it's running down this corridor, starting to go down the first corner. It is out of the room. You and Wisatris and Ilassi are in the room. Elven rangers are picking off cultists, but are generally, they're clearly not leaving. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is just you and Wisatris and Ilassi left in the room. What would you like to do? Don't forget, um, we have a sacrificial rogue. We wanted to die. They're part of the rogues who are... They're ah. part of the Elven Rangers doing that. Yeah. Nearly. Um, your, your ally Galadriel, who is not here this hour, because they can't play this hour, is also part of the Elves shooting arrows into the cultists. Yes. And the Mangler that's now making its way through the door. Yes. Um, I will keep moving. Mm -hmm. um, like, constantly looking over my shoulder, but I keep moving. Mm-hmm. As you run, um, Wisatris turns and casts a spell on you, and you are hasted. <gasps> Boy! <laughs> Your speed is doubled. You also have a plus two to AC, but it, that won't save you. So uh, you <laughs> are. You can move at double speed, so you are very, very quick, and you are able to run down this corridor at considerable speed. I don't forget that after a minute of running this fast, you will be exhausted. Yes. Yes. Just so you know. I'm aware. Jump on the pack mule. Harvey, you have been teleported with Roberta into the prison. You can easily fly through the prison as you've done before to get out quickly. Would you do so with Roberta yeah. in turn? Yeah, I would grab. And he's drawn athletics check because you are smaller than her and it is difficult for you. <coughs> uh, no, uh, modified 20. There it is. Uh, Harvey grabs hold of you and the two of you are now flying through this corrugated metal twisted jail and are making your way out. The elves are running as well. The pack mule is now the slowest thing in the party, unfortunately, as you dun, 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 boom, leap over and are now shooting ahead as you all run your way out of the room. Of course, I mean, you don't know what's happening in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to presume, if it's fair, 
that you will all be taking dash actions and going as fast as you can trying to get out of this before anything happens, yes? Yeah. Yes. 240 feet around it. <laughs> no. So, with my dash, yes. that's 120. Feline agility. If you use feline agility once. once. Yeah. So, for the first one, it's 240. <laughs> <laughs> Very fast cat. Lovely. Good. You are running as fast as you can. You are all running as fast as you can. Can I have some slightly more awful music, please? Oh, no. Sad. You, are, you two are the first out of the jail. As you fly out, cultists around you are, they see a bird and a human, sorry, an elf, flying out of the jail, which is a hole in the ground, and uh, some start to fire off spells at you. <laughs> Nat 20 on the roll, I'm so sorry. Harvey, a, a, ray, a ray of fire just burns out and cuts across your back, doing seven points of damage to you as you go. As you fly up and away, you see your tabaxi friend bounding their way out of the jail and running towards the north gate of Goldcrest. As you fly up and away, what you also see is that the town is full to the brim of cultists and eldritch monsters that seem to be amassing a second wave, as the first wave is already on the way to your hometown to destroy it. They're preparing for a second assault. They very clearly plan this meticulously to completely wipe out you and your friends. You saw the first ore explosion go off. You saw the size of that. Can you describe what that was like and what you saw the first time around? Um, so... The, the, the ore, the ore, the sort of colour of the ore is sort of a bluish? Green. Green, okay. Um, the first time I, I was flying to the town of Lee Glen and uh, out, of, out of seemingly nowhere, uh, an enormous explosion like uh, like nothing else I've, I'd ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, a mushroom cloud. Flattened this town, and hundreds of feet away in the air, I, f- I f- was knocked by the. Uh, almost knocked me out of the air. Roberta, you, you saw it as well. I saw. I didn't see the. I saw it from afar. I saw the aftermath. Isn't you care to add? Um, just that afterwards, it was like, if I remember right, it was like the whole mine that all the ores inside completely caved in. And it was all open, and the town was just raised to the ground like it wasn't um, existing anymore. I think as well, as I as I fly up and I know what's about to happen and this all of this goes through my head, I don't know if it makes any difference. Sure. But my concentration breaks. On, on the, the banishment spell. <laughs> it doesn't come with you, it stays there. But right. yeah, good to know. John? As you in mule form reach the mouth of the jail and are just stepping outside it, you feel beneath your feet a rumble. Almost like a shock wave that washes and almost like a wave actually impacting the ground. There is an almighty rumble. And as this rumble sweeps out, you... Make a dexterity saving throw. As a mule. As a mule. (laughs) With advantage, because I'm sure-footed. Very true. Oh, God. With advantage, thank goodness. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 19. Uh, oh. Yes, 19. 19. Splendid. Even though this, the ground is moving like water, you manage to hold your feet and canter alongside the wall, trying to get out of town as fast as you possibly can. From the air, you too can see this sort of shockwave rolling out through the ground and as it rolls out through the ground the ground behind it just falls away the entirety of the castle is caving in on itself concentration drops on the haste spell and I'm stunned for a turn and you're stunned for a turn you are right by the north gate as suddenly a dizzying wave washes over you make a dexterity saving throw with disadvantage disadvantage? yeah I'm allowing this 
Seven. You are flung against the wall as this wave of energy smashes into you. You take four points of damage as you hit the wall. And you watch as another, as this shockwave radiates out and the ground behind you and the ground inside this, inside Goldcrest starts to just cave in and collapse in. You can see just ahead of you there are people standing on houses nearby and the houses themselves cave in and collapse. People screaming as they are dragged beneath the earth which is just opening out like a gigantic crater in front of you. As you canter past, you see your tabaxi friend smashed up against the wall. You could very easily help them, if you so desired. How could I pick him up? Don't know. He's a cat. Oh. <laughs> How big are you? Um, he's about five foot two. He's a very slim build. <laughs> I'm thinking of picking up a kitten the normal way with the mouth and dragging him along. I mean, it's a bit demeaning. You alright with it? I mean, I'll be alright with it for a turn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm allowed this. You grab your kit, you grab your tabaxi friend by the scruff of the neck and drag them with you as you ride out of the north gate and out of town. As you two fly up, the entirety of Goldcrest is collapsing in on itself. All of the, the ground has clearly got a cavernous space beneath it now, deep and wide. And as you watch, as the town starts to collapse in, explosions, small ones, are happening at various points. You assume manhole covers, you don't know, but the explosive energy is finding places to escape. And as it does, giant explosions, not as big as the first one you saw, but certainly big, are raking the land around. And you can see there's one of these shoggoths in the middle of town is just sliding beneath the earth, explosions all round it. Uh, some of the Bayaki flying through the air have noticed you, but are just flying the fuck away at this point as the entirety of town start to collapse in on itself. Can you make a dexterity saving throw, please? A shockwave rips through the air as these explosions start to go off, and you are holding Roberta close, being buffeted left and right. You're managing to keep grasp of her, as you're now probably a good 100, 200 feet up and trying to escape the effects of this. As this happens, more explosions go off. The entirety of town, and also other ore deposits that were in town, presumably, are going off. And it looks like, as you look down, that this crater is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You can't even see the bottom of it. Roberta, can you roll a perception check, please? Uh, that's a 21. <laughs> Just to see horrible things! With a 21, as this collapse through the underground explosion continues, and as more secondary explosions go off all over, you see something strangely peculiar. There's an explosion from the castle area, what's left of it, and a tiny blue ball of energy is just flung out with the explosion. It goes flying out of town and smashes into the ground outside town, near where your friends are currently running, where it bashes, hits, rolls, and because it's a sphere, keeps rolling <laughs> for a way longer time than you would expect it to but it is nearby where your friends are as you two are flying over in the same direction back towards Holmwood. Can I, um, I want to point it out to Harvey and go, mm -hmm. what is that? Mm -hmm. So you should point out, uh, uh, take the for it. Okay. As you all converge on this point, the rest of you are now out of the range of anything that's happening here, but Goldcrest and most of the creatures and people within it is a complete ruin. You have no idea how deep this crater is or where it goes or even what it does, but... This has happened. Yep. As you head towards the blue sphere, as you ride towards it and as you fly towards it and land next to it, the sphere fades out and Wasatris is standing there with Elassi held in her arms, both bloodied and bruised, <laughs> just holding themselves up. So I just see you all approaching goes, Well, it is a resilient sphere. <laughs> Uh, I immediately. <laughs> it's the most nerdy D and D joke I have ever made. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, I Gee, they both looked. Forgive this. Fucked. They look like they've been battered around and bruised, but they are still alive. I immediately cast mass healing word on everyone. Yeah. So everyone. 
Go for it. Six hit points back. Both Rishatris and Elassi look to be, um, well, better than they were, put it that way. They look to be like, oh, well, okay, this has helped a little. So that, that's that everyone's looking a little bit more hale and hearty. However, the ore in the backpacks on the mule starts to fizz. What do you all do? Be careful. I'm sure footed. <laughs> Can't talk, you're a mule. <laughs> I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to him. Be careful, this ore's just. <sighs> just give it some time, it'll, it'll disappear. I think we have conclusively established that the ore should not be used for this purpose. And she turns and looks back at Goldcrest. And you can all turn and look back too if you choose to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would actually take off and see if I can see anything. Oh, wait a minute before you do that. Turn and look first. Okay, turn and look. <laughs> Appreciate it. As you all turn back to look at what remains of Goldcrest, you see something rather disturbing. It appears that the crater that you can just about see parts of and the walls that were caved in by this crater is regrowing and suddenly bits of the crater fill in explosions <laughs> like time is going backwards and in the entirety of Goldcrest <laughs> reforms and then the explosion happens again <sighs> and the whole thing collapses again it is now in a permanent time loop reliving this moment and all of the death within it being relived by the people within it forever You want to make a constitution saving throw, please? Oh, that happens. Natural 20. Natural 20. Good timing. 15. 15. I'm, I'm going to choose to fail it anyway, just because I think she would. This is not what you think it is. Okay, well, it's a 5 anyway, so I stop. Okay. 12. 12. Roberta? Mm. Can you name me a point in your past? In Roberta's past specifically? where a choice was made that defined her character and her actions. Yeah, um, giving up on... So she studied eldritch um, law mm -hmm. as, her, as her thesis because um, the thing she wanted to study was underfunded. What was the thing she wanted to study? Uh, she... <laughs> <laughs> she wanted to uh, she wanted to study um, usage of uh, usage of verbal components of magic and how that could be imbued within like scrolls beyond just casting a spell once she wanted to be able to like have it so like it could be disseminated and used in battlefields and things like that that's what she wanted to study but no one was particularly interested because they were like oh we love casters um, so what's so, the need yeah, yeah so what's the need um, but so she decided to give up on that to pursue the eldritch stuff can you describe the moment where that choice was made yeah, it was the rejection from. It was the rejection of funding from. So she had a meeting with whoever, whatever institution she was at, which I'll let you decide. Um, so you're sat yeah. in a college room with four professors, uh, sat in front of you, and the lead one, the lead female, is saying, "I'm so sorry, Roberta. This is a fascinating field, but you will have to." approach it on your own if you wish to continue it. We cannot help you. There's simply not enough funding. You realise that you know that you're reliving this moment. You know everything that happened to you. You're aware that this moment is just happening again. Yeah. That having just seen Goldcrest reform and fall again, that you're probably in some kind of strange moment of time. But you also realise that 
you're not doing anything. You, this moment is not happening the way it did. If anything, you're pausing longer than you did at the time. And you feel that if you don't respond in a certain way, nothing is going to happen. What would you like to do? I'm going to stand up and say, OK, thank you for your time. And I'll see about bringing you a different proposal, which is exactly what she did the first time and leave. Mm-hmm. Um... You stay strong in your convictions that your choices of the past were correct. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. In a blink, you're back in the same situation you were in, and Roberta just blinks and appears to be exactly the same. Mm. Roberta, are you okay? <sighs> I'm sick of this all. Let's go. Sorry. As you turn around to look north towards Holmwood, what you see on the horizon ahead of you, up in the mountains, a terrible thunderstorm is raging through the mountains and you can just about see the edges of a terrible battle happening over Holmwood. You're not there and your friends are currently fighting for their lives. Uh, Wasatris and their fingers. I suppose we should go and help them as best we can. I would urge you all to not judge my daughter by her actions, unless he's just standing next to her looking really upset. We all want what's best, but it's not always clear what best is. I'm going to touch the scar on my arm and just sort of look at him for a second and be like... <laughs> Sometimes hot-headedness gets the better of us. But you've killed people today, Lassie. You're the reason they're going to live that over and over again. And that's something you've got to live with. Yeah, she looks pretty upset. And I'm just going to start heading off towards Homewood. Okay. That's fun. Yeah. I'm bored by it. Yeah. As you walk off, unless he turns to you, John, and I lost sight of what was right. I think. Would it be possible for me to change out of form for a minute? Yeah, of course. To that point, I'm just going to change out and just, and just sit. You tried. In the end, you were the light. You tried. Your mother's witness to that, yes, a horrific thing has happened. Mm -hmm. But you still tried. And it's not over, there's still a water fight. Be the leader you are meant to be. I suppose if we try, that's good enough. I'd also ask, could somebody please take this grenade off my back? <laughs> <laughs> um, the ore is removed from you. Do you want to take it with you? At this point, I would just simply ask, is there anywhere safe for this stuff to be? Just I, um... Just leave it there. Just I leave it. I... Hang on, I just need to check on Ranger. Um, right. when... You know, Ranger Firebolt? Oh, well, like... 120 feet. 120 feet, yeah. So, can we leave it somewhere in the middle of where it's not going to damage anyone? And when we get 120 feet away, I'm just going to... Alternatively, wasn't there something about trees being able to purify it? There is, yeah. You'd have to go and do that. It would take you a while. But you could, you're a druid. You could easily find some trees in the oak and bramble where they were starting this purification process and take this to join in with it. I think I would opt to do that. Okay. Also, 120 feet wouldn't be enough range on one eighth the amount she carried. Okay. Would destroy you all as well. So, John, that is in your care now, and you'll be taking it back to the oak and bramble. Splendid. As you all turn to leave, dealing with these various scenarios, um, Harvey, you look back, and Wasarch is just standing there watching Goldcrest collapse and regrow. Fascinating. I'm sorry, did you want something? No, I just...
Hmm. Time is more fluid than I had assumed. And she turns and walks away, following the others. Well, I'd also just, at that point, also just turn around, mm -hmm. give Alessia a hug, and just simply say, there are always things none of us want to remember. Seems like a very good point to end this hour of adventures wanted. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. That is the end of our four hours today. We are back tomorrow with four more hours and so on for a hundred hours. There's 50, 40, five. There's a lot left. We're only just over halfway. Let us see what happens next when we come back tomorrow. Uh, thank you for joining us as always and please do spread the word on Twitter, Facebook, face to face with other human beings. That would be really great. We're on Twitter at Adventures250 where Nemo has been live tweeting the show for the past hour. <laughs> Nemo is currently stretching their hand out as it appears they were typing at quite some pace. Um, they, you can follow us at Twitter and when you do you can also read up every single hour we've already played if you want to catch up on the story or all the videos will be available on twitch.tv slash adventurers wanted and at some point on YouTube adventurers wanted as well if you'd like to see more in the room you can go and buy tickets from the sweet box office out the front here they're just a fiver to join us and uh, you can also use that fiver to buy a player ticket like Mark has and join us at the table and play your own character in this world um I'm, if you're umming and ahhing about playing, please don't be concerned. D&D is very easy to learn. There's not a lot of maths, and we try and cover all that for you. And also, we want to bring the game to as many different people as possible, introduce a wider audience to a sometimes underutilized hobby. Uh, if you feel very strongly about that, as much as we do, you can join us on Patreon, where we have a Patreon account, and you can patronize us from as little as a pound. Uh, do help us there. We are trying to do more free play events, uh, accessibility events in London, Edinburgh, and in Brighton where possible. There's also a donate button on the website if you want to drop a quid or two in. That'd be great. Thank you very much. So, everyone at the table who's left, because Reese Pierce have disappeared, uh, <laughs> if you have anything to plug at the fringe or at home, or generally speaking to an audience of D&D people, please do so now. Not the fringe, but I would suggest if you'd like this type of things, or if you like board games, the Edinburgh Games Hub, mm -hmm. We have D&D Wednesday nights, Groupless Gamers on a Thursday night, and they've got over 900 games to choose from. So grab some friends, go along. It's a great place to spend the night. Awesome. Cool. Uh, I write and draw things at a very slow pace. Uh, <laughs> I put them on my website, which is macdermog.com, M-A-C-D-E-R-M-O-G. So, yeah, please have a look at that. Mm -hmm. Um, I went to see a really fantastic show last night called Hot Brown Honey. Um, it's um, yes. a group of women who are talking about uh, feminism, intersectioning it with race, and it's um, a really good show. And it gets that really, it strikes that really good balance and tricky balance of being politically challenging, but also being an absolute joy to watch. It was like one of the best experiences I've had at the Fringe so far. So um, it's on at seven thirty at the Teviot Gilded Balloon. Um, so yeah, if you can go along to that, that'd be super good. We're absolutely adding to what you're saying about it it's also on in London occasionally they've started mm -hmm. doing it all over this is their second year at the fringe so yeah. the more support you give them the more they'll be able to do what they're doing elsewhere as well and that's really important to spread the message even further yeah cool lovely thank you ever so much everybody uh, that's it from us today so this room's about to be turned into something else I think there's a play on I don't know yep. yeah it's a play on lovely so uh, we need to vacate the premises so if I could ask you all to vacate the premises and we'll see you all tomorrow bye bye Ooh.